Hello everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, Your English Teacher. I am Ritu Bhandari and today we are going to study the third chapter of 11th Standard Textbook, Hornbill. The title of the chapter is Discovering Tut, The Saga Continues by A.R. Williams. Let us know a little bit more about A.R. Williams. She is working as a senior writer in the National Geographic magazine. The extract Discovering Tut is taken from one of her featured articles. Her other works include Bamboo Clothing, Mystery of the Tattooed Mummy, Mummy and much more. Let us look at the King Tut's Mummy. A mummy is a deceased human or another or other animal whose skin and organs have been preserved by exposure to some chemicals in an extreme cold, very low humid or lack of air so that the recovered body does not decay further if kept in cool and dry conditions. These dehydrated or dry out bodies go back to at least 1615 AD. The etymological meaning of mummy is corpse. It is a Latin word, mummia. Discovering that the saga continues gives an insight into the mystery surrounding the life and death of Tutankhamun, the last teenage ruler of the powerful pharaoh dynasty that had ruled Egypt for centuries. Howard Carter was the person, the English archaeologist and Egyptologist who became very famous after discovering the intact tomb of 18th dynasty pharaoh Tutankhamun in November 1922. One of the most interesting facts about King Tut is that he became the ruler at the age of 9. These are a few of his Pictures of his funerary treasures. If you can see, these are sheets. This is a, the golden chariot. This is the another golden artifact. It looks like the face of the uh, mummy's coffin. These are other artifacts that used to be buried along with the kings because they believed in life after death. And they believed that the eternal brilliance of gold would ensure rebirth. So let's go to this chapter. He was just a teenager when he died. The last heir of a powerful man, family that had ruled Egypt and its empire for centuries. He was laid to rest laden with gold and eventually forgotten. Since the discovery of his tomb in 1922, the modern world has speculated about what had happened to him with murder being the most extreme possibility. Now, leaving his tomb for the first time in almost 80 years, Tut has undergone a CT scan that offers new clues about his life and death and provides precise data for an accurate forensic reconstruction of the boyish pharaoh. Before we continue, I'd like you students to pay attention to the title. The title is in present continuous tense. It says, Discovering Tut. The saga continues. That is so because till now there are certain questions that remain unanswered regarding the death of this pharaoh. Why is it that out of all the mummies, he is the one who is always subjected to, to new technology because there are certain specific questions that remain unanswered. As we go on further with the story, we'll understand what are those two questions and why was it important to know. Now, this is the way down to the tomb where the mummy was kept of King Tutankhamen. This is the passage. These are the entrance steps. And from here you enter. This is the antechamber. And this gives a map of the chamber. You can get a, a, bleak, bleak, a kind of a bleak idea about how the tomb looked like underground. This is the Valley of Kings, which we will be referring to. This is the tomb of King Tutankhamen and this is where he was, the room in which he was buried. 
this was a room in which he was buried and uh, if you look at all the carvings and all the paintings on the walls these were the murals these are the murals in the room where the king tut mummy's coffin was kept so let's begin with the chapter i want everybody to understand that this was written when the whole ct scan was already conducted and this is written in retrospect so the whole explanation of the scene has been described from that perspective an angry wind stirred up ghostly dust devils as king tut was taken from his resting place in the ancient egypt cemetery known as the valley of kings dark bellied clouds had scudded across the desert sky all day and now were veiling the stars in casket gray it was 6 pm on 5th of january 2005 the world's most famous mummy glided head first into a ct scanner brought here to probe the lingering medical mysteries of this little understood young ruler who died more than 3300 years ago all afternoon the usual line of tourists from around the world had descended into the cramped rocket tomb some 26 feet underground to pay their respects They gazed at the murals on the walls of the burial chamber and peered at Tut's gilded face. The most striking feature of his mummy-shaped outer coffin lid. Some visitors read from the guidebooks in a whisper. Others stood silently, perhaps pondering Tut's untimely death in his late teens or wondering with a shiver if the pharaoh's curse, death or misfortune falling upon those who disturb him was really true. these two paragraphs give us an insight to their belief this shows that actually the ancient people these pharaohs and the egyptians they believed in life after death they also believed that there was a possibility in case somebody disturbed the dead the pharaoh's curse would never leave him either death or misfortune would follow the person who ever disturbed the dead The way this has been described it's like building up some kind of an emotion over here. The author wants us to feel the terror of visiting a dead body, the terror of visiting the dead. So as in many films at times when they want to show that it's a sinister scene, the wind suddenly becomes strong and there's a storm outside and here you can see if you can relate it to the many other pictures like the mummy actually the picture mummy you'll find that whenever somebody disturbs the dead the sand dust and dunes start getting very powerful so this is what he has she has the uh, uh, writer has actually tried to build up while giving us in detail dark bellied clouds the clouds that are ready to burst with rain had scudded across it means that it had just quickly walked uh, floated across the desert sky and this these clouds they were veiling they were not allowing the stars to twinkle and they are trying to reach us that easily it was veiling the stars in the casket gray that's how the sky has been described here The mummy is in a very bad condition because of what Carter had done in the 1920s. Now, Zahi Hawass is the Secretary General of the Egyptian Supreme Council of Antiquities, who is in charge for the CT scan machine uh, epi- uh, investigation. This is the description of the day when the mummy was to be disturbed, taken out of its coffin, and subjected to a CT scan machine. And Zahi Hawass is the one who is responsible. He leaned over the body for a long first look and Carter Howard Carter that was a British archaeologist who in 1922 had discovered Tut's tomb after years of futile searching its content though hastily ransacked who hastily ransacks somebody when some someone goes and searches for something in a hurry in antiquity were surprisingly complete that means though it was hastily everything was wrecked around but still all of it was there very much complete all the antiquity the old artifacts were there 
They remain the richest royal collection ever found and have become a part of the pharaoh's legend. Stunning artifacts in gold, their eternal brilliance meant to guarantee resurrection, that is, rebirth. They believed that the more the gold the dead would carry, the more sure would it be that they would be able to take rebirth because they had a superstitious belief that the eternal brilliance was meant to carry out resurrection. It was caused, it, all this caused a sensation at that time of the discovery and still gets the most attention. It's not that years have passed by and this has lost its charm. This whole episode has lost its charm. It continues to uh, 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 interest people. But Tut was also buried with everyday things he'd want in the afterlife. Board games, a bronze razor, linen undergarments, cases of food and wine. So here we see glimpses of two superstitious beliefs. In fact, three. One, that the one who would disturb the dead would uh, actually be punished by the pharaoh's curse. The second is the more gold that is buried, it will ensure resurrection or rebirth. And the third is that they believed in life after death and therefore they buried everyday things with the pharaoh in case he needed them in the afterlife. After months of carefully recording the pharaoh's funerary treasures, as I had shown you in the previous slide, Carter began investigating his three nested coffins. Opening the first, he found a shroud adorned with the garlands of willow and olive leaves, wild celery, lotus petals and cornflowers. The faded evidence of a burial in March or April. That is why they come to know, they come to the conclusion that there is a possibility that King Tut had died in these months because these were the things, this was the vegetation that was buried along with him in the form of, you can say, uh, necklaces and, and uh, uh, the, what he uh, donned. When he finally reached the mummy though, he ran into trouble. Who? Carter. Because the ritual raisins, raisins are adhesives, they had hardened and cemented tut to the bottom of the solid gold coffin. Now these raisins are adhesives that come from the trunk of trees or maybe some where th these are old adhesives that were so hardened down the years, these adhesives were used to, to actually fix the body of King Tutankhamen, the mummy, to the golden coffin. No amount of legitimate force could move them, Carter wrote. If you look at this, this is the value of kings, another way. And this is how you can have a look at a virtual tour to the value of kings. So what did he do? He set the mummy outside in blazing sunshine that heated it to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Nothing budged. He reported with scientific detachment that the consolidated material had to be chiseled away from the beneath the limbs and the trunk before it was possible to raise the king's remains. This was really important because actually when this happened, it was an indication that he was really worried about not separating the mummy from the golden coffin because he was after the golden coffin. Remember, this is an archaeologist of way ages back where archaeology meant a search for treasure. It did not mean search for information. So his reason to separate it out was separate the body or to loosen the raisins was to separate the body from the coffin. In his defense, Carter really had little choice. If he hadn't cut the mummy free, thieves most certainly would have circumvented the guards and ripped it apart to remove the gold. They would have made a fool of them and would have made a fool of the guards and somehow managed to have reached the coffin and separate, ripped off the mummy from the golden coffin. This is what the thieves would have done. This is what Carter says in his defense when Zai Havas says that all the harm that has been done to the mummy is because of Carter. So he has to say that had it not been him, the thieves would have ended up really messing up the whole mummy and even it would have been even in a bad, worse shape than now. In Tut's time, the royals were fabulously wealthy 
and they thought or hoped they could not take their riches with them for his journey to the great beyond king tut was lavished with glittering goods precious collars inlaid necklaces bracelets rings amulets ceremonial apron sandals all these things are a depiction of the belief of life after death to separate tut from his adornments carter's men removed the mummy's head and severed that means separated and caused a lot of harm to major every major joint once they had finished they reassembled the remains on a layer of sand in a wooden box with padding that concealed the damage the bed where tut now rests so when he was taken out to be subjected to the ct scan machine king tut was not in the golden coffin that golden coffin had been taken by carter and in that process he had caused a lot of damage that is what zai havas says and when zai havas had to subject king tut to the uh, ct scan machine he was taken out of a wooden box which carter's men had very carefully placed the mummy back into because he was much better carter says that he was much better than the thieves who would have not even cared to put the mummy back in the most possible uh, correct manner in a wooden box archaeology has changed in these paragraphs we will find that the author is trying to tell us that archaeology and its meaning has changed down these years because earlier the focus was on treasure and now it was on the intriguing life and mysteries of life and death it also uses more sophisticated tools because as time passes technology improves and the way with which we search for answers to in mysteries we delve into the usage of much better equipments like earlier it used to be x rays but later onwards now it is ct which is computed tomography now this is a detail of what was the result of that ct scan machine and it would however be able to answer the two major the two major questions and those two major questions are how did he die and how old was he at the time of his death this is the major this is the focus area of the excavation that they want to know how did he die and at what time did he die these answers remain un these questions remain unanswered till now that's why the title of the chapter is discovering that the saga continues King Tut's demise was a very big event even by royal standards. He was the last of the family's line and his funeral was the death or rattle of a dynasty. This is another reason why it was very important to find out why and how did King Tut die. King Tut had died at a very young age to specify the age, how old was he, how did he die and why was it important to find out how did he die because his death had announced the death of a dynasty. but the particulars of his passing away and its aftermath are unclear now the next paragraph is going to talk about the lineage amenhotep 3 was either tut's father or grandfather he was a powerful pharaoh who ruled almost four decades at the height of the 18th dynasty's golden age his son amenhotep 4 succeeded him and initiated one of the strangest periods in the history of in the history of ancient egypt the new pharaoh promoted the worship of the god aten the sun disk and changed his name to akhenaten and therefore he was called the servant of aten he moved religious capitals from the old city of thebes to new city of akhenaten that is what why he was called crazy he was known this place is now known as amarna he further shocked the country by attacking amun a major god smashing his images and closing his temple we can find a parallel to this in our indian history where mohammad gauri had gone on a killing spree invading india 11 times and destroying different temples 
So this is the crazy aspect of this king. It must have been a horrific time, says Ray Johnson, the director of the University of Chicago's research center in Luxor. The site of ancient Thebes, the family that had been ruled for centuries, was coming to an end. And then Akha Netan went a little wacky. So these are examples of his craziness. Now after Akha Netan, remember Netan because he was a worshipper of Aten, he also started attacking all the temples where Amun was worshipped. After his death, there was a mysterious ruler who came forward, Smenkhare, and he appeared to rule the country only for a brief time. After that came King Tutakhaten. Earlier his name was King Tutakhaten. Later he, later he changed his name to Tutakhamun because he was a worshipper of Lord Amun and he restored the worshipping of Amun which Akha Natan had earlier destroyed. He reigned for about nine years. Who? King Tutakhamun and then he died unexpectedly. So he died at a very young age. Regardless of his fame and the speculations about his fate, King Tut one man, is one money mummy among many in Egypt. How many? No one knows. The Egyptian mummy project which has recorded almost 600 mummies and is still counting. The next phase of scanning the mummies with a portable CT scan machine donated by the National Geographic Society and Siemens, its manufacturer, King Tut, is one of the first mummies to be scanned. Sorry. First mummies to be scanned in death as well as in life, moving regally ahead of his countrymen. This means that even in death, out of the 600 mummies, King Tut was regally ahead. Regally means royal, royalty. It is related to royalty. So out of 600 mummies of the mummy project, he was the one who was the first to be subjected to a CT scan machine. And also he was the first to have died at such a young age. In life, how was he regally ahead of his countrymen? Because in life he was the youngest pharaoh to ever have been crowned as the king. A CT scan machine, this is giving a detail of all the intrinsic detail of the images that were thrown by the CT scan machine. He was brought there and that night the workmen carried Tut to the tomb, from the tomb in his box and like pole bearers. Pole bearers are like the palanquin bearers if you remember. The palanquin bearers by Sarojini Naidu. They are the ones who hold the palanquin. So pole bearers here, these are the ones who hold the coffin. They climbed a ramp and a flight to the stairs to the swirling sand outside. We had showed you how many stairs one had to go down to visit the, to, uh, the mummy. 20 minutes later, two men emerged sprinting for an office nearby. Why did they run towards an office? Sprinted means to move in a fast manner and returned with a pair of white plastic fans because the million dollar scanner had quit because of the sand in a cooler fan. Curse of the Pharaoh joked a guard nervously. Now this is the same curse that they were talking about earlier that if you disturb the dead, there is a possibility, there is a surety that that misfortune will follow you. So here, what is the misfortune that has fallen upon them? The misfortune that has fallen is that this million dollar scanner, the CT scanner, has stopped working. And for what reason? Sand, ha sand has got stuck in its fan. So now they somehow have to manage with hand fans. This is a brief idea of the lineage which we had talked about. Amenhotep three or four, you can say. He was the ninth pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. After this came Amenhotep IV, Akhenaten, who tried to shift the culture from Egypt's traditional region. He stopped the worshipping of Aten and started, stopped the worshipping of God Amun and started the worshipping of God Aten. And he was a bit wacky. After Amenhotep had actually died, Smenkhare came over, but he was a very short-lived pharaoh. And uh, after that came Tutankhamun. Tutakhamun, earlier his name was Aten, but he started restoring the worshipping of God Amun. Therefore, he changed his name to Tutakhamun, the living image of Amun. He restored the old ways, but he reigned only for nine years and then died unexpectedly. This kind of a portrayal of the lineage may be helpful to learn it. 
Now let's go on to the next page. Eventually, the substitute fans, which had actually been brought by the office men, they from the office worked well enough to finish the procedure and then they were able to get all kinds of pixelates and they were able to find, uh, uh, reconstruct. A forensic reconstruction of the face of the pharaoh was made. And Zai Havas finally felt relieved and he said, I was so worried that I didn't sleep last night, but now I think I will go to sleep. So let's see, this is a facial reconstruction that they have done after the images they were pulled out with the help of the CT scan machine. This is just a predicted face of King Tut of a National Geographic by... Uh, facial reconstruction. So by the time we left the trailer descending metal stairs to the sandy ground the wind had stopped and the winter air lay cold and still like death itself in this valley of the departed. Just above the entrance to Tut's tomb stood Orion, the constellation that the ancient Egypts knew as the soul of Osiris, the god of afterlife watching over the boy king. Because here it's, this is again a belief that this god of afterlife, Osiris, is taking care of the boy king. So I hope students you've understood this chapter. I've tried to explain every line in detail. The next uh, uh, videos are going to be about the short answer questions, uh, text questions and long answer questions. I hope you continue visiting my channel and benefit from it. See you till then. Bye-bye.